are you saints? These are gracious moments that our Father has given us to sit before his throne of mercy and under his feet and listen to him talk to us. Thank you so much for the choir, for the music. Thank you for the children, for the music, and all others who have participated, ensuring that um, the program runs on well. As all of us know, we are dealing with get involved. But in order for us to get involved, several things have to be put right, and especially from our backgrounds and from our homes. On July 29, 1981, Three quarters of a billion people in 74 countries, Kenya inclusive, tuned in to a brilliantly choreographed wedding christened the wedding of the century, that was the 20th century. This was the wedding between Princess Diana, herself the child of a divorcee, with an unhappy childhood with the most eligible bachelor in the world, Prince Charles. Little did the world know that the marriage created that day in London could become an anticlimax after the romance of courtship. Sixteen years, one month, and one week later, that 1st of August 1997, the princess with whom the world fell in love died in Paris as the victim of a senseless automobile accident. This time, a billion people gathered about their television sets at the time of the state funeral to mourn the death of the princess who never lived happily ever after. Marriages and families have become so beleaguered that there are many questions arising. Why are we going this direction, people of God? It is because get involved. How can we get involved when we are in the status we are in our homes? Questions are now arising. What is the truth about a happy marriage? Is it a myth? Is it a mystery? Is it a miracle? Is it even possible anymore to live happily ever after with such questions, how can we get involved? Princess Diana was a product of a broken marriage. Many young adults today are the products of the most broken generation in the history of the world. In the U.S., where a lot of research is done on family issues, Statistics are worrying the touch on young adults. Every 24 hours, 3,500 children are born to unmarried mothers. Every 24 hours, over 2,500 children are wit witness the divorce or separation of their parents. Putting them together, 6,000 children are every day ushered into the ranks of broken homes, shattered relationships, and fractured families, family brokenness. How can we get involved? Remember, this is in the US, just in the US. We have not touched South America, Europe, Australia, Asia, and Africa, the hotbed also of broken homes shattered relationships and fractured families, family brokenness. Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 and 15, the word of God says, Now therefore fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, that is getting involved, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord, and if it seems evil to you, to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, 
whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Our sermon is entitled, From Family Brokenness to Family Revival. From Family Brokenness to Family Revival. Let us pray. A gracious Father in heaven, you are calling us as a church to get involved because you are soon coming. But Lord, how can we get involved when our families are shattered, are broken? We can't be involved. How can we be involved when we worship gods of different sorts? Dear Lord, as we go through your word, open our eyes that we may see what we are to discard by your grace in order for you to use us in getting involved in the best way possible for the purpose of preparing us for your soon return, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created all that we see in the heavens and on the earth. In the beginning, God created the Sabbath. In the beginning, God created the family. In the beginning, God blessed the family, children inclusive. In the beginning, God gave the family a home and the food inclusive. In the beginning, God gave the fam work to the family. In the beginning, God gave holy education to the family. In the beginning, God gave wealth to the family. In the beginning, God gave himself as the chief caretaker and the master of the family. In the beginning, God gave the family directions on how to live and please him forever. In Eden, the life of the family, in Eden was life for the family, and it was life eternal. In Eden, no blame game, no family brokenness existed from the beginning. In Eden, it was peace, it was holiness, it was purity, it was righteousness, it was tranquility for the family. With the entrance of the new master and the new way of life, Eden will no longer be accessible to the human family. Then the Lord God said in Genesis 3 verse 22 to 24, then the Lord God said, Behold, the man, that is the family, has become one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever, but as sinners. If Adam were left in Eden, he could have stretched his hand and taken that tree of life. He could have lived forever, but a sinner. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man. From this point on, families started disintegrating and dying both spiritually and physically. The case of Cain and Abel. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up again against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Family brokenness. From that point, when they were put out of Eden, we have seen what has started to happen. The Bible continues to tell us, let us try to establish, let us track these families down the ages in order to establish the reason behind that God is calling for family revival in the order that we may be involved as we do his work. The family of Cain. The Bible says, Genesis 4, 16, 17. Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord 
and they dwelled in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch, not the Enoch who was translated. And he built a city, and they called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. This family of Cain divorced God from among them, and they lived according to their man-made ways. This family, far from recognizing God in their lives, started to recognize their own achievements, a sure sign of spiritual death, and therefore in need of revival and reformation. Then came the family of Seth. The Bible says, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth, meaning, for God has appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. And as for Seth, to him also a son was born, and they named him Enosh. This man began to call on the name of the Lord. You see here, people of God, within the same family, within the same family, Cain said, their brothers, Cain's family divorces God. The family of Seth allows God, begins to worship God. The question here is, we see the family of Seth spiritually revived, a family that is God-centered, a family worshiping God the Creator. But with this distinctiveness within the same family, same parents, Adam and Eve, between, with this distinctiveness, is it going to be possible to preserve togetherness? Is it going to be possible to live together as a family? As they were moving on, at a certain point, the family of Cain and the family of Seth get not a common ground. The family that feared God, the family that divorced God, at some point, they found a common ground. Now it came to pass, Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them that sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. When it is talking about the daughters of men, I mean the sons of daughters who are born uh, to men, the sons of God saw the daughters of men. The sons of God are the descendants of Seth. The daughters of men are the children of Cain. So they began now to take wives for themselves of whom all they chose. Interestingly, that the people of God got a common ground with the people who had divorced God and they started a journey that has come down the centuries even to the moment where we are today. The people of God began marrying through a lot of wives. We are with shoes in church today. Elders are marrying more than one wife. Deacons are marrying more than one wife. Heads of departments are marrying more than one wife. Children of God are marrying more than one wife. That is a scenario that was started then. In that scenario, people of God, how can we get involved when God is divorced from our minds? Marrying plural of wives was not according to God's will. The behavior involved immorality, adultery, fornication, swapping of partners, all which are not in harmony with the whole character of God. The practice was started by Lamech, a descendant of Cain. Genesis 4.19, the Bible says, Then Lamech took for himself two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the second was Zillah. As the descendants of Cain mixed with the descendants of Seth, Seth Lamech is poor example to be appreciated, came to be appreciated by both the descendants. Surprisingly, dear saints, so read observed 
the descendants of Seth outnumbered the descendants of Cain in marrying plurality of wives. Then how can we get involved when we are living in such a situation, dear saints? God's original plan that remains until he comes again is for one man, one wife. If he had an alternative for a marriage relationship, he could have done so right from the beginning. His fa first marriage sermon, remember the first marriage sermon was given by God. And what was the sermon? Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife not to his wives. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they, the two, shall become one flesh. And not two, not three, not four, not ten, not twenty, not fifty fleshes. The two shall become one flesh. Genesis 2 verse 24 The servant of the Lord says The Lord gave to Adam one wife Showing his order in that respect But after the fall Men chose to follow their own sinful desires We have people today Pastors have issues Dealing with the cases of church members who has gone into a polygamous marriage and they come with an argument saying David had many wives, Abraham had more than one wife and they are called the people of God. Why are you not choosing me? Why are you not electing me to work? Because David was here. They begin going to those directions. Not knowing we are treading on a dangerous ground. We cannot use sin to commit sin. It doesn't work. So how can we get involved when we have such issues in the church? How? The, the plan of God, the Lord gave to Adam one wife, showing his order in that respect. But after the fall, men chose to follow their own sinful desires. And as the result, crime and wretchedness rapidly increased. Neither marriage relation nor the rights of property were respected. Whoever coveted the wives or the possession of his neighbor took them by force and the men exalted their deeds of violence. Marriage was in God's order. It was one of the first institutions which he established. He gave special directions concerning this ordinance clothing it with sanctity and beauty. But these directions were forgotten and the marriage was perverted and made to minister to passion. Polygamy was practiced at an early date. It was one of the sins that brought the wrath of God upon the times of Noah. Yet after the flood, it again became widespread. It was certainly started effort to perform the marriage institution to weaken its obligations and lessen its sacredness for in no sure way could he deface the image of God in man and open the door for misery and vice. Those words are from Patriarchs and the Prophets page 91, page 92 page 101, page 338. It is the word of God. How can we begin to get involved when we are in such a situation, dear saints, in total family brokenness. Polygamy, unfortunately, did not end with the flood, but it continued down the ages. In Abraham's time, it was no longer regarded as sin. Get that? In Abraham's time, it was no longer regarded as sin, but a normal practice. Not only in Abraham's time, but further down into the time of King David. Servant of the Lord says, polygamy had become so widespread spread, that it had ceased to be regarded as sin. But it was no less the violation of the law of God. 
it was fatal to the sacredness and the peace of the family relations. Abraham's marriage to Hagar resulted in evil, not only to his own household, but to future generations. You can see what is going on in the Middle East between the Jews or the Israelites and the Arabs. These are the sons of, one, of the same father. They are the sons of Abraham, but of different mothers. Family brokenness, dear saints, is not possible, cannot allow us to get involved. Even if it is a monogamous marriage, but if it is broken, it cannot allow us to get involved. We will get a lot of stumbling blocks along the road. David afterward married Abigail. He was already the husband of one wife, but the custom of the nations of his time had perverted his judgment and influenced his actions. David, a man after God's own heart, had one wife, but later he takes Abigail, and then after Abigail, several others. Even great and good men have made mistakes in following the practices of the world. The bitter results of marrying many wives was sorely felt throughout all the life of King David. Many, a lot was done in the family of King David. The same kind of situation, people of God, called the wrath of God in the time of Noah. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on earth, and he was grieved in his heart. Dear people of God, these fellows, they, they sought not only to gratify the desire of their own hearts and revel in the sins of flesh and wickedness, not desiring to retain God in their knowledge, they soon came to deny his existence. Some of our practices in our homes, even if we come to church, some of the practices we have in our homes deny the existence of God. So how can we get involved in that kind of scenario? Why we can't we be involved? Because there is family brokenness. Not desiring to retain God in their knowledge, they soon came to deny his existence. They adored nature in the place of the God of nature. They glorified human genius. They worshipped the work of their own hands and told their children to bow down to graven images. Patriots and Proverbs, page 9 0. Dear saints, when God moved the family of Israel from Egypt to the promised land, he gave the following instructions for family unity in the order Israel to be used to evangelize the rest of the nations. Deuteronomy chapter 6. The instructions God gave. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Verses 6 to 9. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 to 9. What did God say? What were the instructions? And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. And they shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. God gave these instructions, verse 8. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. Verse 9. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Meaning the commandments of God. That God gave the children of Israel. The words he gave Israel to teach their children. God said you shall teach them when you lie down. You shall teach them when you wake up. You shall teach them as you are walking along the road. You shall teach them when you wake up. In other words, every other moment you do that. Bind them 
on your hands. They could bind those commandments in their hands. Sio mikufu ya kisasa. No, these things we are putting for beauty and the decorations. That time, the beauty in the hands of the children of Israel were the commandments of God. And God said, you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. The commandments were written at that gate. When people were going out, they read the commandments. As they were coming in, they read the commandments. That was the kind of family God wanted to establish in order to use it to go to get involved to the other nations that were around. Where are we today? We are saying get involved. The question down bottom of the line is, are these instructions now in our houses? Are they there? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. The Bible says, this is God still, God giving instructions through Moses. Only, Deuteronomy 4, verse 9 and 10. Only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. And teach them to your children and your grandchildren. Teach them to your children and your grandchildren. There are some people who are sleeping. Tell them to wake up. You are next to that one sleeping there. Especially concerning the day you stood before the Lord your God in Horeb. When the Lord said to me, gather the people to me and I will let them hear my words. That they may learn to fear me all the days they live on the earth. And that they may teach their children. Dear people of God, the instructions God gave us to help us in order for God to use us to reach out, we have put all those instructions aside. We have developed our own policies. We have developed our own things, our own curriculums. And we have put aside all that God gave us. Take an example very quickly. Proverbs. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. People of God, my dear saints. We have taken away and removed all that God gave us to safeguard us. And we have improvised our own. Proverbs chapter 22. Verse 6, the Bible says, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. It is God who said, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. This training of children, people of God, is no longer there at all. It's no longer there. Our children don't know anything. We have brought up children. Our young girls, our young daughters, they are grown-ups. They are in universities and the colleges. But a number of them don't know to boil even an egg. There are issues going on in the world. In one college here in Kenya, as they go, they were put in hostels. So two, two, two young girls were put in one hostel. One was working because she was trained to wash her own clothes, to make sure everything is clean. Another one was brought up, even an egg is handled roughly. This one was handled in a softest way on planet Earth. She doesn't know how to pet herself easily. She can't wash a thing, not a single cloth. She finds Zahuyu, ambaye ameosha sake, anafa. She doesn't know how to cook, amepata chakula, amepika, anakula. Kila kitu. And the parents whom are saying, you know our daughter is in such and such a place, and that daughter is wonderful. Wonderful doesn't know how to take it back. 
Some of us parents have contributed. Our girls are in schools, which is very good. But normally we, we send drivers to these colleges. They go and bring all the skirts, all the everything, all the clothes home for the house guard to wash. The house guard washes them. The house guard irons all these clothes. The driver is given, takes them back there. You are training the house guard to become a super wife while you are killing your daughter and burying her. How can we get involved in such a situation? How, dear people of God? They don't know how to brush their shoes. They don't know how to wash utensils. Because you say, don't touch, don't touch the utensils. You eat and leave them there. A whole Christian, a whole woman of God, married, telling her child, leave the utensils there. And she's a girl, and you expect her to get married. Why do many of our young people who are married today don't cook? They go to neighbors to collect the food for your grandchildren. And the neighbors who are meandika, it is fresh food. Who told you? They never throw away any food. They recycle. Meaning, rice which was prepared in 2020, some pieces of grains of rice are there today. And we say, that you see, see how to cook is easy to nine and nine us. Who told you that? Parents, let's wake up. It's not a generation we are bringing up. No. It's not their mistake. It is we training them. They don't know even how to spread their beds. Somebody wakes up, throws a blanket. Then at night you hear. Nani amechukua blanket yang. Who has taken away my blanket? The blanket is under the bed. In some houses, lizards come and hide inside those blankets. So when you want to sleep at night, there is something. You begin in the room, what is this? You never spread the bed. The lizard came, found a good place, and they slept. That was a hiding point. So why disturb it? The Bible is saying, train up a child. God is not a liar. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Begin training your child. The moment a child begins actually from the womb. That's what the, in the morning, pastor talked of the book Adventist Home. He talked of the book Child Guidance. How many have had rumors of those books? How many have had rumors of those books? Question number two. How many have copies? Had copies in their homes? Pastor, you are in a problem. How many have them online? Yaku swipe. See, there's a problem. Dear people of God, it is not possible to go. So God said, train up a child. He continued to say in verse 15, Proverbs 22, 15. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The road of correction will drive it far from him. This is where we have gotten it wrong because we want to live our own ways, because we have divorced God from our hearts, from our minds, from our families, from our homes. Today, Calicum developers and the policymakers have made sure Parents have no voice over their children. Policies today say, don't touch a child. Don't, don't scold a child. Don't rebuke a child. Don't open your big eyes to a child. The child has rights. So parents are now handicapped. They are at the mercy of toys vinanyonya parent can't speak. But God says foolishness foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The road of correction will drive it out. Proverbs chapter 13 
Proverbs chapter 13 back again to chapter 13 and verses 24 we Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 24 the word of God says here he who spares his rod hates his son but he who loves him disciplines him promptly he who spares his rod hates his son so curriculum developers have made sure that parents have hated their children and they have succeeded why curriculum developers because a number have also failed in child training that's why curriculums are coming so that we are all the same Someone asked a question yesterday concerning our church schools. I think yesterday or yesterday, but one, when one of the speakers was presenting here. Those church schools we see today are not the ones which were there. The ones you see today are not even near those ones who were there. So those ones which were there I happen to have gone to some of those that time in Kenya, talk of Kamagambo, talk of Ranen, talk of um, Nyabola, talk of Gendia, which was sold to the government, is no longer there. Talk of Nyanchua, and all those talk of um, Mutitu, talk of um, Webuya on the other side, talk of uh, Mere on the side of the coast, talk of Bugema in Uganda, and many others. That time, those years, you go there, you never came out as you went. There was training given. For example, a time came that was called work program. You go to classes in the morning. After lunch, you go to what was called work program. You are taught to weed flowers, to mob houses, to do all sorts of things. Some splitting cool, some doing all that. At the end of it, you were paid some amount of money which you could go to your school fees account. So when you come out, some could come out as carpenters, some could come out as welders, some could come out doing at least something, knowing something. That system in Kenya began to be dismantled in 1966. So one of the ministers in parliament proposed and said, why should these things be there? We want children to go to school at eight and nothing like that. And then by four, everything is stopped. So it was dismantled. So what we are calling church schools today are not church schools. There's something else. Because what they were meant for was to train up a child so that when you grow, you now come out able to stand on your own when things are not right. Talk of Baraton when it started, for those who attended when it started, 1979. Those times the students went there. It was the students who were milking cows. It was the students who could serve as watchmen. It was the students who could mow the fields using those mowing machines. It was the students who were working in the cafeteria. It was the students who were doing all these things in the hostels and such like. And this money was going to their bank accounts. When they came to their home, they not only came with a reduced uh, fees balance, but they came also well trained in doing many other things. Today, nothing. Why? Their rights. Let me say this to the people of God. The only right we have is the grave. That's the only right we have. That one, no one will come fighting for it. It is your own and your own. That's the only right we have. All other things, you have no right. Therefore, we are cheating our children that they have rights they don't have. Because of that, we have what is called family brokenness then how can we get involved? Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23. Verses 13 and 14. The word of God says, 
Do not withhold correction from a child. For if you beat him with a rod, he will not die. You shall beat him with a rod and deliver his soul from hell. Do not withhold correction from a child. It is the word of God saying. It is the word of God saying. For if you beat him with a rod, he will not die. You shall beat him with a rod and deliver his soul from hell. All these have been removed completely. God has been moved away from our families and he has been thrown out and we have brought in man-made inventions which are leading us to death and not to death, Kidogo, but eternal death. God continued to say, when you go in that country, Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1 to 3, God gave again instructions. If there arises among you a prophet or a dream of dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder comes to pass, of which he spoke to you, saying, Let us go to other gods which you have not known, and let us serve them. You shall not listen to words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. If your brother, the son of your mother, your wife of your bosom, or your friend who is your own soul, secretly entices you, saying, let us go and serve other gods, which you have not known. That's number six. Neither you nor your fathers, of the gods of the people which you are around you, near to you or far from you, from one end of the other to the other end. You shall not consent to him or listen to him, nor shall your eye pity him, or shall you spare him or conceal him, but you shall kill him. But today, people of God, what are we experiencing here? Honestly, what God was calling the families who formed the church of Israel and Judah to come to repentance. He was calling for family revival in order to use that church of Israel to get involved in the other nations to bring them together to God. Dear people of God, families seated here today, there are chances we have committed adultery by bowing to other of gods. What is the status of your family? What is the status of my family? Or what are the status of my family? Have we grieved God in his heart? What is it that we have greatly gratified in our own hearts? To an extent we have not retained God in our knowledge and have denied his existence. What is it that we have adored in the form of achievements? We have mentioned it in the previous lessons. We may not be bowing to stones. We may not be bowing to rivers. We may not be bowing to mountains. We may not be bowing to lizards. But we may be bowing to things like version. We may be bowing to a promising handsome young friend, to a promising beautiful young girlfriend you have luckily secured recently. You may be bowing to a top of the notch career you know today. I don't know in Uganda, but here in Kenya, things are interesting. Some young people may be traveling from Mombasa to Busia, and when they reach near Mutituandei, those are some of the towns in Kenya, then there is a stopover for a while. And as they were chatting inside the car, probably they were sitting together, when they reach this place, Mutituandei, and they are resting out for a while, then a young man, that young man comes and then kneels here. Will you marry me? Now, how, how will I marry you? I have never seen you. And he's having a ring. You don't know the ring, whether it is a devil, you don't know. And the guy says, yes, I know. My dear young daughters, kwani na chotwa chotwa? The Bible is saying, God is saying, when they shall tell you, go and bow down before other gods, don't accept. We may be bowing that way. 
We may be bowing to gods of electronics we are using, the smartphones, you know, the TV screens, the kind of movies and all that kind, to an extent that we adore them without recognizing God. And we have taught our families, children inclusive, to bow down before them. These extremes have brought about family brokenness and the situation is calling for family revival. And an urgent spiritual revival within our family is needed. One again of the gods we are bowing to, Ellen White says the following, Version is deteriorating the intellect and eating out the spirituality of our people. Obedience to version, meaning as we bow to version, she says, obedience to version is pervading our Seventh-day Adventist churches and is doing more than any other power to separate our people from God. Testimonies, volume 4, page 647. Version has become a God today and the word of God is saying here, it is it, it is deteriorating the intellect. It is eating out the spirituality of our people. Obedience to it, to our people, has made us to be separated from God. Those who cling to ornaments forbidden in God's word cherish pride and the vanity in the heart. They desire to attract attention. Their address says, look at me, admire me. That's what the word of God is saying. Version is a God. Let, allow me read something from Exodus chapter 28 as we are nearing towards our close. Exodus chapter 28. In the book of Exodus, Moses was given instructions on how to prepare garments or dresses for those people who are going to work in the sanctuary. And Aaron was the one who was chosen. And this, there's something I'm picking from there in the connection with what we have read here. That version is our God today. We are bowing to, we are worshiping. Exodus 28, verses 2 to 4. And take Aaron your brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel that he may minister to me as a priest. Aaron and Aaron's sons, Nadabu, Abihu, Elias, and Itamar. Verse 2. And you shall make holy garments for Aaron your brother, for glory, and for beauty. So my dear saints, the garment you are putting on, is it for glory and the beauty of God? God says, make them holy garments. Anytime we stand here, we are standing in the presence of God. The garments I'm putting on, are they holy garments? I don't mean a holy in terms of being washed or such like, but do they represent God? A holy God. Can a holy God be comfortable? Before that, remember, when God called Moses, Moses had slippers on or sandals. And then Moses saw a bush burning, but not going out. So he said, what is this going on? And a voice came out, Moses, remove your sandals, for you are standing before a holy cloud. Today, dear saints, there are issues that have come. I hear they are called high hill. I don't know. They are like a mountain hill. You hear somebody from the door. The, the more the person comes, everybody now turns to that one. God said, make them holy garments. Verse 3, you shall speak to all who are gifted at sons, who I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister to me as a priest. Who is the tailor of Yanguo? It's very interesting, people of God. Choirs, Who's, who takes care? Whom do you hire? God is saying here, verse 4, verse 3, you shall speak to all who are gifted at sons, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. 
God is saying to make garments for those people who are coming to serve before me. Some choirs, when they are going to purchase uniform, there is a lot of, a lot of um, whatever is going on. People are campaigning. I have a fundi. I have a fundi. Mine will give you. It is not a fundi he has, but he knows what he's going to get. Kidogo. God says, choose a people. Verse 4. And these are the garments which they shall make. The end of that verse says, So they shall make holy garments for Aaron your brother and his sons, that he may minister to me as a priest. Allow me to go to verses 30, very kindly of the same chapter. Verses 30 says, And you shall put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Thummim, and they shall be over Aaron's heart where he go, when he goes in before the Lord. So Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel over his heart before the Lord continually. Let's go to verses 40. Same chapter. For Aaron's sons, you shall make tunics, and you shall make shashes for them, and you shall make hearts for them for glory and beauty. So you shall put them on Aaron and your brother, and on his sons with him. You shall anoint them, consecrate them, and sanctify them, that they may, they may minister to me as priests. Verse 42. And you shall make for them linen trousers to cover their nakedness. They shall reach from the waist to the thighs. If God gave such instructions, and when we come before him, how are we appearing before him? How are those parts of our bodies, how do they look before God? Because we are coming before a holy God. God gave instructions. May I repeat? And you shall make for them trousers to cover their nakedness. They shall reach from the waist to the thighs. Bottom line is that people of God, we are worshipping other deities or gods and hence committing spiritual adultery. What is the clarion call from God down to us today is that repent, be revived. Families who form my last church, families whom I want to use to get involved, repent and be revived. God is saying, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added to you. You have married the spouse. You may have married the spouse because she was educated. You may have married a spouse because he or she had a car. You may have married that spouse because he or she was rich. You may have married that spouse because he or she was famous in the society. You may have married a spouse because he or she was beautiful or handsome or cute. You may have married a spouse because he or she had appealing eyes. You may have married a spouse because he or she had a green card. All those things are nothing but worshipping idols. The question is, how shall we get involved with all this in mind? Dear people, they may seem to have their place, but with the time they fade away and the marriage becomes an empty shell. Through prayer, through faith and perseverance, patiently, child of God, Start working on genuinely loving your spouse. Start working on genuinely committing your life to that spouse. Start working genuinely loving your children. Start working genuinely loving your parents. And genuinely giving God his space in your marriage because marriage belongs to him. And that is family revival. And that is how we can then be involved. All that has been occupying your mind apart from spiritual value of prayer, faith and the study of the word of God, and the hearty commitment to your family is already observed. It's just like worshipping idols. And therefore, building on sinking and the family sinking sand, family brokenness, let us build our own Christ, the solid rock. 
On Christ the solid rock I stand, O rather ground the sinking sand, O rather ground the sinking sand. As Joshua challenged the Israel families not to worship other gods upon entering the land of Canaan, so is Christ challenging us today as church families not to worship other gods which the world that has nothing to do with God is worshiping the clarion call of Joshua now therefore fear the Lord serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt serve the Lord and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served on the other side or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, Joshua declared, we will serve the Lord. Joshua said, as for me and my family, we are ready to get involved because Jesus is coming soon. Joshua said, he didn't say as an independent entity. He said, as for me and my family, we are ready to get involved because Jesus is coming. That should be the same to all of us people of God that may the family brokenness we are experiencing by the grace of God be turned into family revival and the family togetherness and now when we get involved for sure the world will say Jesus is coming how are we involved dear fellow family heads let us remember that we have no righteousness to give to our families we have no obedience to give to our families we have no forgiveness to give to our families. We have no mercy to give to our families. We have no grace to give to our families. We have no victory to give to our families. We have no eternal life to give to our families. We have no heaven to give to our families. All these are provided by Jesus Christ and him alone, the only begotten son of God who loved us before the foundations of the world were laid, who took our humanity, who lived our life, who was condemned for us, who was crucified for us, who died for us, who was buried for us, who was resurrected for us, who ascended to heaven for us, who is interceding for us, who is coming soon for us to live eternally in that eternal home where righteousness dwells forevermore family from family brokenness to family revival dear saints christ in his closing in closing his message to his last day church which comprises his family that is preparing in readiness for his soon return has this urgent call behold i am coming quickly blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book a call from family brokenness to family revival in order to fit in the program of God of saying get involved Revelation 22 7 and behold I am coming quickly my reward is with me to give everyone according to his work this is a call from family brokenness to family revival in order to go in to get involved in a manner that God will bless. Revelation 22, 12. He who testifies of these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 22, verse 20. A call from family brokenness to family revival. Dear people of God, is there anyone who could say, my dear Lord, for sure I have seen family brokenness in my family, but I could like to call upon you, Lord, because you are a merciful and you are a gracious, to come into my family, Lord, and enable to revive my family, so that my family and I may also be involved in going to reach others. When others see what is from this side of my family, they will come to accept you as Lord and Savior. Do we have anyone saying like that? That gracious Father, I pray for family, revival in my family.
Can you stand up for prayer for those who have raised up their hands? A gracious Father in heaven, the standing of your children is not for fun. They have not stood so others may see them, that they are standing. Genuinely from their hearts, hopefully so, they are calling upon you to transfer them from family brokenness to family revival, to family reformation, to family reunion, a reunion that they will experience that will enable them to heed this call, get involved in a manner that will bring glory, glory and honor to your name as you are preparing us for your soon return. For it is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.